fucked up to you. <laughs> it's just as well because I'm a poker for a slip up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hello, this is Richie from the Metal Cell Podcast. I'm delighted to welcome Howard from the Magna Pina. How are you, man? And, All good. And Jack, what would you call Jack, probably? Is he kind of a, a panelist? So you can pull him from the panel to play a few guitars every now and then. One of He's the a, an associate. An, an associate. associate. Yeah, He's, yeah. Part, yeah. He's part of a wider collective. A wider collective, yeah. <laughs> So how are you, man? Um, big fan good, of the latest good. release, B sides and live um, recordings. Yeah. Quarantine EP. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite um, fashionable now. Yeah, we, and that was that was a thing we tried to avoid, but ended up doing. So fuck it, you know. It was um, absolutely. We needed to do something, so why not? We had we had the the the, the new album, which is a different recording again, and we that finished in in late January, would have guessed. And our plan was was to release it at the Siege of Limerick in, in April. Wow. You know, and yeah. obviously things happened and the mix got locked down in the studio. So the engineer couldn't go get it. So we had to go and record something completely new. Oh, really? That's what happened? Wow. That's what happened, yeah. We were ready to mix Is that with Shawnee Cats, was it? Shawnee, yeah. So okay. the building got locked down. Couldn't, he couldn't oh. get in to get the mixes. So oh it took three God. months for him to get them. So we were sitting on our, on our hands for a while. And we said, fuck it, let's learn how to use Reaper. Let's learn how to use Easy Drummer. Let's we learn have how to the technology. We, we have the technology. technology. We just have to put aside some time, which we had yeah. plenty of. Yeah, yeah it's but a nice stop gap. You obviously yeah. had the, the hunger for it as well, like the fact that you were oh, all... Oh, we were buzzing, because we were active yeah. right up to it, you know? We played a yeah. gig in Dublin a week and a half previous. Yeah. And um, Where was we were that? firing on all cylinders, you know? And we were waiting for the first mixes to come back. We, we actually fine. got the first mix back, but you know there was tweaks and stuff to be done to it yeah and obviously when they got locked down in the studio it was game over for at least yeah. you know at that point at least four weeks how many songs was on that hard on the new it's release like, there's 11 there's oh, 11 yeah. on it all together um like that now i know we were discussing before we went down here that that Carosa, we're talking about doing their next one live um we did a live we went in and we just set up and played and um we did everything in three takes each which was fucking phenomenal going at the time and uh, we had so much time left in the studio, we ended up writing a song and recording it. Wow. You know, what? it was a fucking, it was great. It was <laughs> you really guys. firing, like, you know. Jesus. How long did you book for? A week or a few days? We booked for three, we booked for three days. And uh, at the end of the first day, we had eight songs done. Savage, so, yeah. <laughs> we, we did the, the other three that morning. And then oh. we were on the vocals. So, Jesus. You work well with Shawnee, though. Shawnee is the man. Mm. Um, he he's he's really Steve Albini type, I guess. You know, he he likes um, getting the sound of a room. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mistake we've made before. I think myself, anyway, going back Jesus twenty years ago, even of of not capturing what a, a, a live essence, I guess. You know. Yeah. We can really really suck life out of things. So we were in such good shape at that point. We played so many gigs. We were practicing three times a week. We were good enough to do it live. So we just said, "Fuck it, let's do it." And it, uh, it was extremely successful. Jeez. <laughs> pros, pros, man. Is that something you think of doing, Jack? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd, um, first of all, I'd love to work with Shawnee sometime as well. Um, mm. like, I'm really, Highly recommend them. Yeah, recently the Grief Eater thing. So good. But uh, definitely, uh. yeah, I think um, after the, the stream, the Limerick stream the last night, we were saying that we we'd be we we we've been, we're going to sit down and talk about how we're going to record but uh one of the options would be to do a live and i think we've been playing it so much and we were kind of like it was it was as tight as it was in the room for the stream and listening back to it with like good good sound quality and stuff we were like oh we, we could actually do this like which is a good sign yeah yeah and Enjoying if, if you well, can like, it saves you so much time on tones and things like that because yeah. the tone yeah. is your setup and you're done. Exactly. So and you're not you going back to push effects like. on things. You know, it does save a bit of time if you're good enough to pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, you're, I think those are well, well able to do it, you know. Going speaking of either. recording live, you're up tomorrow night, Howard. Yes. Uh, the, the bad rep um, from my Dolan's, from Dolan's Warehouse. Uh, we're doing it for Milford Hospice. Very good. Wow. And uh, yeah, really looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, we're 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 buzzing like <laughs> we haven't been together 
properly in five months. You're going to be and hyper, like yeah, and and hyper. Slunk, yeah, we've had you... a couple of practices, and it's it's been like playing a hurling game. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like have you played with slung from a tree before? I have. Um, I, I, I've played with him a few times. Uh, not, I don't think we played him with the Magna Pina, but mm. part alone, maybe four or five times at this stage, I guess. Yeah. But um, it's Good interesting night. because the, the band I was in 10 years ago, uh, Five Will Die, the album was called Slung from a Tree. Jesus yeah, man, there Christ. you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine so, that I'm wondering, I'm wondering, is there a reference like You'll you know? have to ask them on <laughs> Friday. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure like. it is. Like it's happened, Howard. Someone has named a band after one of, uh, like a, a release you were Yeah. Like. I wouldn't be surprised just given <laughs> the kind of stuff they play, you know. Yeah, yeah, big time, big time. I say it is, man. That is. But they're lovely mad. lads. Um, yeah, they're great. They're uh, there's great. a father and son in the band, actually. Yeah, yeah, the two boys. Great. Yeah, they're great two to lads, watch live yeah. as well. They just have, they just have such crack, like you know. They they, they do. They're so young and just rips, like. just just rip, just jamming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the last you time know, I saw them too. was at Monolith. Yeah. It was two years ago, was it? Or was it like, no, it was two years ago, wasn't it? Last year. Two, two years ago. The first one. In, in the old Cyprus, I'd say, was it? In the, it was the old Cyprus. Because okay. actually, yeah, we did play with them, with the Magna Pina at that gig. Yeah, you played that one as well, sure, yeah. 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 So give, it, give Howard um, a run through on what's ahead of him for tomorrow, Jack. Uh, a rough an, idea, anyway. Take away some <laughs> of the surprise element. An absolutely seamless affair run by a well-oiled machine. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, we we had such fun, we had such good crack. Like even just um, like when when you're excited to load in, you know, and you're actually putting, yeah. lifting a load of amps across the road in the <laughs> rain and Limerick at like fucking half five in the evening, and you're just like, yeah, <laughs> um, it's mad the things you miss, like isn't it? Yeah. So like just meeting uh, Kieran and John, and everyone was just in such good form. Really nice, relaxed atmosphere. I felt. And uh, also yeah. war- having to crack with the worn out lads and uh, Alex from the last Vinci drove them up. So just chatting to him and uh, just nice Jeez. relaxed setup there, getting the cameras ready. We were getting the, the setup and just made it like it just fucking looked class as well. Um, yeah, it looked great on, on the on camera. Yeah, it, was it was interesting. They had the, the side view on the stage, you know. The, yeah, yeah. I think there was a the jump cam as well that wasn't streamed, but um, that I think there might have been one recorded. So. For all the stuff that like you can't see the drummer too well in the main in the main camera angle, but oh yeah, that's what you there want. Might be, there <laughs> might be, yeah, yeah, yeah. All hey, you put up never see that. a drummer. <laughs> never see a drummer's face when he's screaming, like you know. <laughs> that's something you want to see, though. Uh, definitely with Ed, anyway. Like if yeah. I can't see Ed tomorrow night, I'm turning it off. Same. <laughs> we start the Don't campaign. Worry, Give him you. an extra what? high stool or something. I think whether that camera is working or not, you'll definitely see Ed at some point. Jesus, you can yeah. certainly hear Evan anyway. Oh my God, calling people out. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Crazy. It worked though. It worked between that and the pedal board. Someone like actually put in oh, 50 your quid. pedal boards, man. After I said, after I said I <laughs> tidied it for 50 quid, someone actually donated the 50. <laughs> Still haven't tidied it though and I never will. Yeah, it was um, Steve from Grey Stag started calling you out on it initially. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a nightmare of a thing. How are you seeing it as well? Like that time we were messing around with like getting tones um, for the Magna Pinna gig. And you're just like, man, just use yeah, the press, just, yeah. yeah, just use the tube just, screamer. Just plug in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tube screamer, plug in, away you go. And I was just like, all these pedals, I don't need any of them anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 um like I mean I I do like a good pedal board. I do like watching um bands navigate it and things like that. But for myself, I only ever I don't think I've ever had more than three pedals in a, on the board at one time. Yeah, Inclu- including a tuning pedal as well. You know. Yeah, like would you believe like in Limerick that night I was actually only using three. I was using a, a tuner, um the Battle Hammer Moose's Battle Hammer and a and a reverb. Perfect. Pedal. That was it. Yeah. And that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all you need. Flat's like. <laughs> Just simplifies everything. Don't it does, especially it. when you're playing so many gigs in a row. It's just a matter of showing up, plugging in. There you go. And how many two, actual three. pedals did you have there? I thought I thought I nearly counted yeah. ten. Was it? There's there's about between ten and fifteen on the board, but I just bring them all around with me all the time. <laughs> when I'm jamming or something, I'll just switch out different ones for the crack. So, but I bring them to gigs then as well. So it's just like some sort of mad scientist thing. It looks like, but in fact, it's just a, a glorified storage unit. 
And did... actually, Mike has um, our, our bass player in Magnapina. Mike, he has an old uh, cutlery box. Oh yeah, nice. So you slide it out, and he's got his pedals nice and compared with you know the leads then in the top drawer is fucking great. Beautiful. It's the perfect thing for Beautiful. leads and pedals. Classic. It's a, kind of one of those velvety cutlery boxes. <laughs> yeah, with a little insignia on it, you know. <laughs> Golden <laughs> personalized country. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> antique shops will be raided across the country. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, what was it like, Jack? Then I know it was a great buzz setting up the gear and then starting off. Were you a bit nervous? Um I felt I felt more relaxed, to be honest, okay. than like a, a normal uh, gig when let's say when people start filing in like an hour or half an hour before you're standing downstairs and Fred's and you're just like <laughs> but uh like i didn't have that at all i was just walking around just uh looking at how class everything was and chatting to people um but yeah we were buzzing to play as well though so like i think that came out like so it was it was a good there's a good energy there it's like really intense but i think it was just a nice atmosphere for it and like the sound check was just so good that like after we sound checked uh kieran Callahan was like playing it back over the pa in the room and it sounded ridiculous. It sounded like a recording, like uh, everything on its own track. So we were, I was just like, after I heard that, I was like, man, this is going to be, you know, class. Like anything I was like semi, not worried about, but conscious of like vocals and stuff. Like, will they be loud enough? Um, and just hearing that back then, I was just way more relaxed. I was like, oh yeah, this is going to be good. This is going to be good fun. Like, hmm. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, isn't it? It's when, when you kind of when things go wrong that you can do nothing about so things from the yeah. sound engineer's point of view or a mic cutting out or whatnot like those are the things that kind of worry me when you go into gigs you know yeah stuff that you can't look down and see that it's a pedal and just kick it back on or whatever you know mm. um and have you got the are all the lads there tomorrow night howard the other yeah. four lads yeah um we had uh we we have James was kind of dicey for a bit because he's on field work at the moment. But, um, you know, he's back on board now. We'd asked Jack, actually, but uh, we know that Jack wasn't available. And as soon as we knew Jack wasn't available, it was like, yeah, James, you're going, you're playing. You have to come, you have to come down. Man, I was, I was you got called from I the panel and you turned it down. I, co I couldn't fucking believe I could do, man. I was it was like, very short notice, in fairness. It was like, you know, yeah, it was, like it was really days. short notice. I would have just had to... Be, I had to quit, quit my job or something and just burn the 11. Because that's what I was doing the last time. I had like 10 days to do the 11, I think. That's right, yeah. Just like and, uh, it all yeah. the time. Like, during my lunch break, I'd be in the car like playing fucking cowboy disco. Like. What, was, what was that for, Jack? What gig was that? Uh, last year, um, a Magna Pinna gig in Limerick. In, was it during the summer, I think? Um, during the summer? It was Pharmacia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, I think it was... June or July with Podracer. Podracer were doing uh, a, a tour on their EP, I think it was. Yeah. They, and, uh, so we did a couple of dates with them. We played the all as well. That was it, yeah. That was that, that gig, yeah. Yeah, we saw yourself down there, sir. Yeah. Mm. That's right. That's a great venue, the Marine. It was brilliant, yeah. It's like um, a Brighton Pat Beach Hotel, night. Jack, with a piano, a carpet, and the bar. Oh, no oh, way. This is class. Perfect. It's a lot of floral arrangements. It yeah. was, uh, it was per the perfect place for selfies and photographs. I think we just, we just posted view. about 40 photographs on Facebook that day. Like. Yeah, had to be done. <laughs> yeah, myself uh, and Pavel, we just met in the middle of the floor, and we just fucking moshing around the place. It was class. <laughs> just a brilliant memory. Yeah, Pavel had a day. We, we were at a party the night before in Consgaff and um, <laughs> <laughs> we were like, Pav, do you want to play a gig tomorrow? And he's like, okay. <laughs> he's oh he, learned, like, he, learned, he learned the nine songs and <laughs> off he went. Man. What a fucking man. Consgaff as well. Like... How, yeah. <laughs> who's on the... Is there any other panellists we're missing there? So we've Pavel, we've Jack. Anyone else that jumped in for you at any we've, stage? Uh, we've Ed, Gren Ed Grinnell as well from um, Dublin. He plays in a band called Slacker Symphony with James. He's James's brother. Yeah. Um, he's he's filled in a fair few gigs as well. He actually mixed the the Squid Salmon GP. Okay. Oh, cool. Class. And uh, he does the the chorus vocals on God Hates Covered. Ah. Will we will we listen to that now? Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, we'll give it a spin. Hopefully. Um... Is there like a reaction video as we're listening to it? <laughs> it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear it?
so good. Yeah, it's gaslit listening back to just <laughs> remembering the bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk I'm us through it. I'm not a drummer at all. And um, at the start of the lockdown, we were trying to figure out how we were going to record drums for this thing. And Ed had an old beaten up rhythm kit at home, an electric kit, but um, it didn't sound great. <laughs> so what he ended up doing was sending me the patterns. So I had to figure out how to program it into Easy Drummer, work oh. it out. So I must have listened to that track a hundred times back and forward. It's just learning, to get drums it's right, you know? curve, isn't it? Oh man, Jesus, it, it, it really was. It really was. But um, it was a lot of fun. But I have, a, I have a massive appreciation for drums afterwards, I really have to say. Mm. Yeah. It's a fucking yeah, nightmare. It really, <laughs> helps, it really helps with writing too then though, once you can put together Yeah, some, for sure, for sure. Loops and, uh, like... That's a it's a tricky tricky enough guitar rhythm picking thing as well on that song, which was nice. Yeah. It's kind of interesting to figure it out. Why we jammed it a couple of times previously, but we'd never paid attention to it, you know. Yeah, I get you. Why did you go for that? Attention to it. And just for that reason, um, we had done it once or twice, well, more than once or twice at at uh, practice, and you know, fleshing it out, I guess. And uh, it was somewhat decent, but. Um, we realized we were playing it completely fucking wrong <laughs> <laughs> when we started actually examining it, you know. But uh, that was the original plan was to record just that and uh, release that as a one-off thing. I uh, think it's we were... I think it's better than the original. It's my own opinion. Ah, uh, go over that. No, it's nah. seriously, it's fucking brilliant. I'm and I just like, I love Christian's so um, vocals as well through it. Yeah. He did it through his phone, which is amazing. Uh, no way. Yeah. No way. Fucking hell. But it, it had that, I guess, phasing effect yeah that, yeah that you hear there's very little done to that you know yeah. Uh, yeah. and the chorus vocals then were recorded a bit bit more professionally it's like somehow managing to be raw even though you're tracking everything separately like still mm. managing yeah. to be raw that's like it's really interesting to hear that like, it was that fun trying, trying to get that right because you know yourself when you're recording to click tracks and recording things with a bit of precision it yeah. can sometimes sound a bit too precise you know it's different yeah it can lose the intensity sometimes yeah, and even even programming in slight fluffs here and there on the drums was fucking hilarious, you know? <laughs> yeah, so humanize. Rim hits and things, humanize it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And was that produced up in Dublin as well? That's Yeah. So the way we did it was, as I recorded uh, guitars and the, the Easy Drummer from down here in Cork, and um, Ed would send me the beats, and I'd spend a bit of time programming them in. And then we'd send it to Dublin, where James would figure out his guitar parts, and then... Uh, we got Christian through the vocals and we did a round the table. Everybody put vocals down one after the other. Cool. Uh, various means, through the phone, through microphones, whatever way we could. And then Ed mixed it. The most time was spent Ed mixing it, really. He yeah. did a great job. He did a fucking you know, when, super job. Once he did God Hates a Coward, which we did first without entertaining anything else, we just did that and had it done. Mm-hmm. And then we got the mix back after he'd spent a week or so with it. And you're like, yeah, we can do we can do another couple of songs here. Like, yeah. Great idea to just work on one fully first. That was it. And to get the process figured out, because there was a lot of file sharing and, and sending stuff yeah. back and forward. Just to see, and, uh, it was great, though, because when you had an idea, you just record it and send it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of instead of explaining it before you play it at jamming, it was a bit of that. Like, right, I'll record it and I'll send it to you and see what you yeah, think. You know? so this is the way it is now. <laughs> and if, you're, if you like it that much, record it and send it, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, track, well. Sleeping Howard, is that, was that two or three songs oh. combined into one or what? No, it's the, it's just the one song. Just a, <laughs> just a ballad, just a ballad. Richie, I saw, I, I, I had the uh, pleasure of witnessing uh, Howard and Councillor Mike and Ed play this acoustic in, in, Con's ba- in Condoyle's back Oh, yes, Ed. We're no on the way. <laughs> Incredible. Fucking Incredible. hell. When was that? A few months back? No, about two years no, ago. Years ago. Years ago. Is it that, <laughs> that old? <laughs> Jesus. Years ago, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, we, we had that way back in the first lineup. Um, as it is, there's no difference to it whatsoever. Apart from maybe some of the flourishes at the end there with the reggae bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, this is the song as it was as it was written maybe four years ago at this point. Jesus, that's we, mad. We played it live a fair few times, but um, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a really I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I made it, though. Yeah, we were. It was the perfect opportunity to record that song. It deserved you know? it. It's the only time we'd ever get away with, a, you know, an eight-minute doom ballad, <laughs> reggae outro. <laughs> and two steps ahead. 
Two Steps Ahead is an old song as well. Um, I think we might have played that, Jack, actually, in yeah, the Pharmacia yeah. in Limerick. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, yeah it has like um, Beastie Boys vibe almost off it. Yes, yeah, exactly. it's cool, yeah. I like it, yeah. It's kind of different, yeah, kind of... Yeah, Dead Beastie Grips Boys. We were yeah. listening to at the time, I think it was, and we were trying to come up with some sort of, um, I don't know, shouty rap, I guess. Yeah. Are you, that's, that's you're rapping on it as well, it. Howard, aren't you? I have a rapping, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. MC Howard, woo! Like, I it is all I remember. In, in rhythm. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. It's it's one of those tracks that, like, I'd always be, like, pleasantly surpri- surprised when you play it live because just, like, seeing Ed give an absolute song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. one of, like, Ed's finest moments, I think. Like, it's so good. <laughs> And you squeeze in it. suits his face. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. And you squeezed in a brand new one with I Kennedy then. Yeah. Was, this was the other. See, we so many different. Uh, we, we fluctuate left and right. We're like ADHD kids, you know, <laughs> picking up things and dropping it and going on to the next thing. But we were also supposed to, once we had God hits a cover, the next thing we were going to do was to release the last gig we had played and release it in its entirety. So live at Dublin, whatever it would be. Okay. Because we, we played 11 tracks that night and everything was recorded, um, isolated from each other, from Alan Hadlin Alan, from Zora. Yeah, from Zora. Oh, Shout out to Alan. Good yeah, boy. he did a great job. So we had, we had those, those files and he just, they just needed to be mixed. So we were going to mix all those and release that as a live at, did the, where, I forget where it even was. Dropped it Dublin. twice, was it? No. Dropped it twice, yes. Yeah, upstairs and dropped it twice. And it was going to be live from dropped it twice. Mm. But the, the issue we were having was is that it was really heavy on new material. So we, you know, we didn't want to release the new material ahead of what's coming. True. Yeah. 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 So we reverted back to just pick, cherry picking it a little bit. And I mm. Kennedy is probably the, the easiest one to throw on there. Which it's the opening track on the new album, actually. Is it? Oh, yeah. What's, uh, is it obviously about Jack Kennedy or John F. Yes, Kennedy? Yes, yeah, John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. We're, big, okay. we're, big, um, <laughs> we're big fans of the 40s, 50s and 60s kind of, mm. I suppose, political environment. And by fans, I mean, we're just interested in it. It was just an interesting time. Yeah. Jack but, was um, the father. He was an awful bastard, wasn't he? Yeah, apparently so. I beat the crap out of him and whatnot. Yeah, I, t- I thought it might have been about it, like, him. Like, kind of, he's an interesting dude, to put it mildly. Yeah, mm. this is it. And it, it's interesting subject matter. But we love a good conspiracy as well. You know, oh, yes, we, we all try, love conspiracies. Now. We try to kind of, all things conspiracy. you know, for further crack, we kind of manipulate our way into them by adding the Magna Pina as part yeah, of the conspiracy. Yeah, yeah. And the videos, <laughs> those videos were hilarious. Ah, oh, stop. And that, that was another quarantine thing. You know, we, I've, I've got, I must have hundreds of hours of footage of us acting the maggot. No way. So it was, it was a way to put all that together. Are they, the are they old ones? They're, all, they're from four years ago now. Yeah, apparently. You know, three, three I guess I was, I was, you've all aged very well, but Pavel certainly. <laughs> I just went, nah, that can't be fucking late. Like. <laughs> you see, uh, you see the Chris good head of hair back then. Yeah. Was Chris Daly in one of the? He was, you know, yeah. Chris is. Yeah, he looked so young in it. So I was like, man, I know, man. Was he when, playing the cello like, or something? Uh, the cello and the violin. When they're like giving and, uh, out on the couch. There's a, there's so much footage. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like I, yeah. st- I stopped. I stopped after we did the squid sandwich thing because you know we had something to kind of put out there. But for a while there, we were just putting out a video a week, quarantine <laughs> with the Magna Pina. It was great. I loved it. It was great. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, uh, it was a lot of fun. So totally fun. irreverent and nothing to do with music whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, get bashed, I, get bashed in a review over that now. <laughs> yeah. would, we're, we're 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 planning to um, put it all together in a in a you know a multi version of that of those videos. Put it all into one kind of thing with some extras and bits and pieces put it into a oh, bust then and the memory stick the yeah, sex there you tape, go, Richie, you're, you go. you're ahead of me on this one yeah <laughs> how much how much are you gonna it's going up it's one? going up the whole time oh the next one's going to be yeah i mean there's going to be gold plated stuff inside it so we're talking 25 grand <laughs> at least, minimum, at least. You know? and it's going to be a bidding war as well well this, this is what we're hoping for yeah <laughs> It's more, but yeah. We'll, we'll reveal all on, on, on the next step with that, um, with that kind of thing. Next, but, I think yeah. one of the villains in James Bond made an attempt to steal it at some stage and <laughs> got caught you, and you, buried you, down in some fucking <laughs> field and passage or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't bury the passage, Jesus. I think we dug up after four, four or five hours. Like. <laughs> 
be someone watching me in a pair of binoculars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's like loads of drones flying around passages the whole time, just watching people. So it's probably best not do it there. Yeah, yeah, this is it, man. You got to go west and get down to the mountains for this kind of thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd say Chris must be a super fan. Chris, Chris is um, he's. Yeah, I suppose. Chris saw Z Ren for anybody that doesn't have a clue what we're on about. <laughs> I know we know we know Chris pretty well, and uh, we've we've done a lot of the jamming sessions with Chris. He, he's a, he'd often be in the jam rooms the same time as us, and he'll just come down just and we we'll, we we'll just play a death metal set for the crack because Chris is there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, ha- I haven't seen him. I've never seen him without his Magna Pena T-shirt on him. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a mainstay for sure it is yeah uh, that and the Hawaiian shirt over I, I hate to Hawaiian say shirt. I hate to say Richie but I think he ripped it I think he ripped it about <laughs> we, we'll do a whip <laughs> around for him <laughs> yeah, yeah. he gave me a, he gave give me a him, kimono give him one. I think he's earned sure. another one he's earned he's another earned one he's earned another one yeah for yeah. sure he <laughs> gave <laughs> me a kimono <laughs> <laughs> I think if anyone's going to get wear out of the Magna Pena merch it's going to be Chris oh, fucking hell <laughs> And they have, um, we're waiting on their stuff as well. That's all done, I'd imagine. Sure, we all are. Sure, Jesus I, Christ, I'm sick of listening to it. Like, you I, know, uh, every time I, we sit down with Ed or, I, I or Chris so. or Pavel, they play the whole thing. And you're like, lads, will you release <laughs> I, the fucking I, thing? I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it, but yeah, I've heard the whole thing. Same. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm it's fucking sick of hearing it. Like, it's yeah. brilliant. It's it is unreal. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah, like, oh, no, the, there's a bass out here or there's a click here. You're like, fuck it. Yeah, it's just like, lads, come on. Yeah. It's fucking great. Um, yeah, it's great. My wife is on it actually. She sings on it. That's my. That's like one of my favorite parts. The hook in that song. Yeah. Do people hear that like. Oh my god. She it comes t- out of nowhere. Yeah. Is yeah. that on the chorus? Is it? I I can't remember. It's now. on. It's, it's like, on the chorus. Herself and her sister did um, a, f- a, a female backing box for uh, that song, which makes sense when you hear it. But it, it does kind of come out of nowhere. Kind of going from this blast beat to a very catchy chorus. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, almost like Justin Timberlake call and response type thing goes on. <laughs> yeah, and then it's and then like oh the way it like rolls on after that then is just it's so good like. Yeah, yeah but if any of the G Ren lads are watching, put the fucking thing out and stop mm. fucking around. I'm give sick of listening to your shit. Give yeah, it to give everybody it to else. We're calling Instead of playing it to me on your phones and going, this is how good this is. Yeah, put the fucking <laughs> thing out. The fucking day, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'd wonder, wouldn't you? Jesus, what what's holding them back at this stage? It's just perfection. It's it, you know, there it's, it's it happens every band. Do you, I don't, you I don't think, off, you know? I don't think Chris is a perfectionist. I'd say it's more Pavel, is it? No, no, it's Pav. Pav is Pav and Ed are two, Pav two very um very. Spent years and, doing to that. their credit, they're very they're very perfect about everything they do. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds it comes across though, man. Like it will be worth it. And as well, like the music is just so strange. That like you can't expect them yeah. to just like behave normally with the rest of the <laughs> things they do. Obviously, the whole process is going to end up being strange, like you know. But, um, yeah, and they've got a they've the got a whole about. sweeping orchestra in one bit as well, which is yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. Like. Yeah, it could is be, great. It's like could, Mr. Bungle does dead metal or something. Yes, really good. yeah, yeah. Could be the yeah. sleeper hit of the year. Yeah, we don't know. Oh man, it could be the game. We'll never fucking know. Put it out. <laughs> <laughs> it could be like the next the Melvins of, of Cork, like or yes. Ireland. <laughs> like Guns N' Roses at this stage, like 10 years later, yeah, and we've got this album recorded, but, you know, yeah, one of the <laughs> symbols is out. <laughs> uh, the album are toured for Squid Sandwich. Who gets the credit yes. for that? It's really cool, so actually. So that would be, that'd be Mr. E. Blunden. He, um, he, we were just talking about it, really, I suppose, as to what we were going to do, what we are going to call it, and... Uh, mm-hmm. We're trying to stay away from quarantine isolation. Oh, thank God you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we were we were laughing about um, uh, the spinal tap thing, shit sandwich. So we were on a Zoom meeting one night trying to come up with different titles. One of the titles was Dead Wish Tree, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how kind of far left we went on at Jesus. one point. But, um, no, we, we set on Squid Sandwich and uh, it's perfect. did the artwork that night. <laughs> really? <laughs> which, which, as we lead on to, I have a present for you, Richie. Oh, no way. Benefits of doing all this research, Jack. So here it is. Oh, class. That's the an original. original. An original Mr. E. Bond at London. No this way. Is what's on there. It's like a fucking Banksy man in 10 years' time. <laughs> As you can see there. Richie, here, Richie, thanks, Richie. For the thanks for all the support. One word of love, the Magnapina, and different signatures. Ah, oh, fucking class, man. Pure love. That's outstanding. So, 
when we when we get it has its benefits Richie. man it has its benefits <laughs> oh man when it pays off Richie. when it pays off when it pays off man there you go so you get ed's crayon drawing of a squid inside two bits of bread on a beach <laughs> To hang on your wall. <laughs> right, the retirement fund there sorted with you. Yes. As I said, it could be the new Banksy. Who, had, who, who knew? Who knew? I must frame it for you because I want to put something into the frame as well as for when you're old and you break it open. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking a treasure map to the bus, you know? A capsule of mescaline or something. In there. <laughs> That's what the sex tape actually is. <laughs> what was that? The old um, acid tabs. Remember them back in the day? Yeah. Yeah, I remember you, the guy who pulled out the, the old organ there not so long ago. He found it in the back shed or something. It had been there since the 70s and it had just sheets of acid all over it. He no. didn't realise and he ended up playing it and looking at it to see was it still working. And sure, he was fucking 11 hours later. <laughs> Where was this? <laughs> in America. Dude. I thought it was a well-known story. I'd never remember heard some this. Some guy was just, he was just emptying out of his shed and there was an old uh, organ there from, from the 70s. It hadn't been touched with Leslie speakers, the whole lot. And uh, there'd been sheets of acid left on it, but over time they had just it dissolved. You know, melted onto the fucking thing. So he was rubbing the dust off it. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, it, that's you'd, brilliant. You'd, uh, an 11 hour trip. You know? I had no face. idea what had happened. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh, lads. When do you think um, we'll be playing live gigs again, lads? Is it going to be next year? Yeah, I, if I was to guess, I would say. Um, I, I would guess so. It, it's hard, it's hard to, to have an opinion on it, I guess. You know, I would hope that safety would prevail and we'd wait yeah. for a vaccine for these kind of things. I can't see it working without, without that safety net. Yeah, really can't like because Harry D had the uh, Amenra thing lined up, didn't you? Which was a great. We great did, and we lot. do. It yeah. still hasn't been um, postponed yeah. or, or rescheduled yet, but um, what from what I know, that, that, that's a big possibility. Yeah. Um, I reckon it probably will be postponed and it'll probably be for the best. Because you're yeah. looking at 50 people and up in the price and changing the tickets oh. scenario. It's hard to know. Uh, the decision lies with the lads, but, you know, if it goes ahead, we'll be playing. But, um, mm. you know, we'll be doing it responsibly. We'll be taking, you know, spending our time two weeks away kind of thing afterwards. Yeah, of course. But I'd, I'd hate for someone to go to that show and go home and get someone sick. Or yeah, yeah, you know. like people won't take that chance, though. You know, like you can be guaranteed when when the men do play here, it will be safe for them to do so. So, like if it gets postponed, uh, yeah, it's just like Monolith. I mean, Monolith would have been on in two weeks. It's not happening. It's not the end of the world. It's going to happen next year, and like exactly. everyone is absolutely cool with that. Like so, just. And that's it. it. it, it and there, there is, there's, there's valid reason. It's, it's reasonable and logical to, to postpone things. I think. Yeah. And it's okay. We're all looking forward to next year. It's gonna be twice as good. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Be very crack. Yeah, I don't know. Be the patient man. I don't know. Like, I don't think there'll be a vaccine anytime this year. Um, no. It's yeah, just, so. it's just you'll be able to be diagnosed faster. I think that's probably the whole. That's yeah, all yeah. we can hope Testing for. Early. That's Testing, why. Yeah. That's why uh, it's looking more, more unlikely i think as well like um just leave it off just leave it off at this stage i'd say yeah. so, and you know yourself lads jesus the song kicks in you have a few points in you i mean the last thing you're going to be thinking of is not hugging the guy next year or fucking yeah, going yeah. up the front for a look like you know? torture like yeah yeah fuck that like yeah, one of I don't know. one of my highlights um of this year was it this year the your gig partalon in in fred zeppelin's yeah it, oh was the legend February? Was it February this year? January, January, February. Uh, it was, it was January, this year, yeah. It was January. It was January, I remember, because I fucking missed it. Like, one of the, one oh, of the only ones I'd seen, like, your last few. I, like, the monolith one, actually, was savage. But I uh, missed that one. And uh, I remember, like, uh, Tomales texted me and was like, uh, Chris Daly is doing uh, vocals on Jerusalem. <laughs> Jerusalem, yeah. <laughs> no way. And then I text my sister, and I was like, we missed out on... On, on what was happening and she texted me back and she was like I'm at the fucking gig <laughs> she was at the gig I was just going to say what <laughs> yeah I was like no at some gig I'd say uh, it, was it was just a lot of fun. it was one of the best gigs of the year Howard without a doubt I had such a great night brilliant it, it was a good gig it wasn't perfect but it was a good gig but uh, I think everybody enjoyed themselves for sure yeah I broke two I strings I think at least on my air guitar <laughs> <laughs> For fuck's sake, and I love that one. You'd be well used to that, Howard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a problem. 
it's not a problem. problem. I think I picked I, that up off you, like smashing them recently. Playing, as Ed would say, playing guitar with your fists, like punch, punch the guitar. <laughs> yeah, I've an awful problem with it. Even, even tune down to G sharp. Um, I still managed to break the E string, which is just Jesus. how the fuck do you do that? Like that's some low, yeah, some low shit. Like you know, I've, I've, uh, my technique is terrible. You know, it's it's way too heavy handed, and it, it doesn't so, have to be proven it over and over again. It's probably it driven. One set. It's probably it driven by the, the the live crowd, Howard. I don't, you wouldn't do it. No, do it in practice. Not he so does. He does this, he's <laughs> worse. Terrible technique. Oh. He's worse behind closed doors. Oh for fuck's sake! I'm worse. I I break up my practices all the time. Um. Yeah. I I rarely get through two practices without breaking a string. Uh. Never never be able to play a gig one after the other without changing strings. Cost me a fucking fortune. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. It was like eight, eight euro a pop. It's about eight, seven to eight euro a pop. I buy them. I buy bags of fifteen and twenty from Pullman. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I might get. I might get three months out of it. Like. So, someone sponsor <laughs> this man. For playing gigs. <laughs> yeah. Someone give me a string sponsorship, please. And if you get a string that I, if you get a string that I can't break. Who will I, who will I tag then on this? Um... Ernie Ball, we're calling you. <laughs> like we once did. Yeah. Bernie. No. We're, we're using no, thanks, Ernie Ball. Ball. Every time I touch your strings, they explode. <laughs> <laughs> Redesign them. Like a custom Parthalone uh, set of strings. This is it. I'll the the ones, uh, kind of last. I'll get you. Up there. We'll, we'll try and get um, some sponsorship for him, will we? Let's do it. Let's make this happen. Yeah. We'll, we'll approach Tolman first. <laughs> Tolman, yeah, yeah. Since he's uh, these are the lads I'm using at the oh, moment. There you go. As you can see, Ernie, uh, that's to get me through that's lockdown. That's his preference. Yeah, fuck Ernie Ball. And our day, Tolman <laughs> made Howard, yeah? No, they're uh, the Dario. All right, okay. So they're they're American made, as far as I know. But, but you um, get them through Tolman, is it? Yeah, I get them through Tolman. Yeah, they they are less corrosive, so they they just they let they last a couple of jams. Um, I was just going to say corrosive for you. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, I, I think my sweat is made of alien acid or something. <laughs> it's, it's all the rage. Burns through stuff. The rage. Squid ink. Oh, yeah. I've got I clothes see. with the, the armpit just burnt out, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, man. Wouldn't surprise me. I've seen the way you sweat through your beard, like, absolutely just oh, it's like ridiculous. pouring, it's ridiculous. pouring through you. Oh, That's man. Like, I, anytime I go for spicy food or anything like that, I mean, it's, it's happened more... <laughs> It's happened more than once that the owners come down and ask me, "Am I okay?" You know. <laughs> I remember like, actually okay? when some yogurt? <laughs> I remember when you were playing Monolith, actually Partalan and Howard jumped off the stage, came down, gave me bit the, 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 the wettest, <laughs> sweatiest <wrong>. hog lad. <laughs> You're the best. That's the best kind. Oh, stop, man! Passionate it's beautiful. <laughs> Pure salt yeah. on my lips. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that goes back to why we can't play gigs for for a while because that's the first thing I yeah probably do. The next gig is come down and give you a big sweaty hug, you know. <laughs> Proves the point, really, doesn't it? That's the thing. Yeah, you know, did any of you buy any new gear um, over the last few months? Then, since you're not oh, God, spending yeah. any money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I bought. A, I have. Yeah. I bought a synthesizer and started making. Uh, oh, man. Just like making sounds in my spare time, having an absolute crack with it. And I bought like um like um, a pickup for recording acoustic as well. So like um, nice. yeah, and bought a new yeah. microphone, so I'm like able to record. I'm like trying to like be able to record some sort of like acoustic sound, guitar sounds from home to like just be nice for like mm. home demos or stuff that I just do and listen back to myself. Actually, yeah. you played me some of those, Jack. I don't know. Do you remember? You were in a bit of a state. <laughs> Me in a state. It was after probably one of the forums anyway, but you were yeah, in a bit of a state. I, yeah, anyway. I, I, you I, sent them on, uh, man. They were excellent. I said, yeah, so I sent on like this uh, vicious hardcore thing that I, I put together. <laughs> well, like I didn't even have lyrics for it. I was just screaming into it. And it was like the fastest thing ever. And you know, like Code Orange type riffs thrown in like hooks and stuff. Oh, you got to send me send some of that stuff. I will, yeah, yeah, yeah send it on. Yeah. Uh, good crap though. It's just yeah. doing stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, I got a synthesizer as well. Just oh yeah, ah uh, nice. But um, I got uh, an old guitar, put some dirty fingers into it, and uh, 
I came up with this, well, not came up with it, but I saw it online. This new little locking system. Oh, which oh. is the best thing ever. That is genius. Yeah. I use a Grolsch, uh, do you have a little rubber on Grolsch bottles? That's what I use yeah. to mine together. Oh man, you'll never go back after doing it. I'm after hooking up uh, yeah. three of my guitars with it already. Can and, you show uh, us to us, show it again? It's like a kind of a clasp like a on a gate or something. Is that a harness? Like, for, uh, it's climbing gear. It's you climbing gear, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you got your, you know, little <clears throat> screw off here. Savage. Fucking MacGyver, man. More machine than man. But Jarrett's a guitar I'm doing up as well. I know Les Paul. You're restoring nice. that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I used, to, I used to use it quite a bit back in the, um, about 10 years ago, I guess, back in Five Will Die. Nice. Um, it's just, it's accumulated a lot of rust. I, I kind of dug it out over the over the lockdown. It's a lovely guitar. I don't know what I was thinking of hiding in the attic. What do you reckon? So like, I took everything off it. If you if you uh, bring it back to life and like a load of Five Will Die uh, sounds are coming out of it, what happens then? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think Five Will Die would ever, ever do anything again, you know? Okay. It's, it's good to leave things behind. We did it for 10 years and, you know, yeah, it, was, yeah, yeah. it was so yeah. much crack. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. It has, its, know, and we, it has we, it such a place now, look. Yes. Yeah, it, it, this is, it, it, was, it was certainly of its time, you know. I wouldn't say that it would be relevant today, but back then it was. It was pretty. We were one of the only bands doing it through the recession. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that were, that were doing it full on, like. Yeah, I, only, I saw you once by fluke. I think... Um, he were, either you were supporting someone or something. It was in was it in Krushkin Lawn or one of those places, maybe? Could well have been. You know, yeah. geez, there was one year we paid 50 gigs. Or 50 gigs, sorry. And uh, that's all. If you think about that in terms of a metal band from Cork, hmm. 50 gigs in a year. It's a lot of, lot of gigs. That's you know? crazy. At that time, during the recession, 2008, like. Jesus. Did you, you know? play any of the Winterfest or any of those uh, metal? We did. Um, we played a couple of them, I think. Um, we played a, a festival in Poland as well, um, which was one of the most insane things we have ever come across in my life. Go on, talk to us about it. Tell us. Stop hearing you stories, heard, man. This is you must have heard. Shows. You must have heard these stories, lads. They're, they're I think <laughs> I heard about it this already. But yeah, go on. It was, it was intense. I suppose I might as well tell it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we went to Poland in 2008, I think it was, February 2008, so it was over to what we were told at the time was, you know, come prepared, it's going to be minus 10 degrees and snowing, so you spent the fortune on, um, sur not survival gear, but, <laughs> All these you know, heavy coats and things, and sure, when we got there, it was 20 degrees and the sun was bad, no, that was, <laughs> no, we oh, not even fucking work. winter clothes, like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we played a couple of gigs there, uh, one was in Tarnabrzeg, um, it was in a kind of a back back room of a pizzeria. Um, through little Sam McAmps. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But um, there was people climbing the poles and fucking breaking shit. It was amazing. Just the reaction. But they didn't give a damn what was we played. They just mm. went to the rectagon. But But um, ah. we we played in, uh, oh, what was it called? Katowice. Katowice, which is a place that you fly into. But you, it's, it's uh, about a half an hour south of that. And there was an old skate park. We were kind of getting a bit wary of it as we were coming in there because we had to get public transport and as we were driving through it it was a bit of a shanty town and, you know it was like something out of a movie you know it was really i don't know it looked a little bit desolate <laughs> for 2008 yeah. like Chile or something there was a skate park um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was very 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 hotel vibe you know shout out to the lads from Chile. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we were driving past and uh, we saw this, there was a kid at the side of the road and uh, he, had a, he had a Coke bottle and he just broke it and he started drinking out of it. Do you know, and we were going, right, just oh, oh, clearly, yeah. just clearly a bit of madness around these parts. But there was a skate park in the middle of all this, which just looked crazy. It was like they'd put all their funding into this skate park, you know, but the rest of the place was just a shithole. Like it was fucking weird. And um, there was a bar there and we went in and there was 15 of us traveling together. There's two bands. Um, Liam from Days and Night was there. Liam from Suts there. And uh, mm. there was armed guards there with little, little Uzis on their hip, you know, right. standing either side of the stage oh, no. and at the, at the door as you went in, which in hindsight, why do they have Uzis? <laughs> and why are they like being really aggressive at the door and stuff, you know? But um, we 
drank an awful lot. We were waiting around an awful lot to play the gig. But there was, um, it was a quite a big crowd, maybe maybe 100 people, I guess. But in that space, it looked pretty intense. Mm. But there was an element of that crowd which were kind of dodgy, to put it mildly. Neo-Nazis you know. or...? A little bit. It's, it's hard to, to pinpoint that, but uh, in an essence, I suppose, that, I guess, yeah. Vibe, like... More more nationalists, I think, okay. than, than outright Nazis. Um, they just fucking hated everybody that wasn't from that square mile, you know? Yeah. Didn't matter, oh, really. Yeah. It was just that square mile and... Just the mentality, yeah. Yeah, so they, we were playing, we played the gig, and it was a bit ropey, I guess, in terms of the crowd, but, you know, we were happy enough to the performance and whatnot, but... Um, Long story short, about half an hour after the gig, there was a buddy of ours getting the shit kicked out of him in the back. So we were like, what the fuck is this? So we ran in, thinking, you know, 15 of us, grand, you know. And uh, we were met with a hardcore group, I suppose, of about 20 lads, Polish lads, you know, with the military jackets and the whatnot. And their body was on the ground. So we ran in, myself and uh, Barry, and we pulled them out of there. And uh, we dragged them out of it and we were like, you know, back off kind of thing. And the man pulled aside his jacket like that. And he just had like four or five knives. Fuck. <laughs> and he was explaining to me that my friend was a turtle and that he was going to knock him on his stomach so he could stab the weak part of him. Jesus. And he's like, right, we're in a different level of intensity yeah. here. You know, um, it, was, it was enough to make me take it seriously anyway. So we were trying to get him out of there and get everybody organized. And they were breaking bottles off him, fucking kicking and punching him as we were walking out. And we hit him in a room. And uh, we went to the organizer and we were saying, what the fuck do we do here? You know? And uh, he was like, fucking drunk drinking out of a bottle of vodka straight so i was like fuck so next thing a group of five or six lads just accosted myself and, the, and andy and they just accosted us like and they took us away <laughs> and we were like what the fuck is going on here you, you had no choice like you had to kind of just roll with us and see what would happen and they brought us up to a room to meet their leader a fucking leader like and uh he sat there and he quizzed us as to where we were from he was like oh you were where are you from write down your address so i know where you're from I was fucking wired it like Jeez. and he was like prove you're right? from Ireland <laughs> it's terrifying and uh, so I pulled out my passport which in hindsight was probably a bad idea, bad idea but I yeah, yeah. showed it to him and was like Ireland mm. you know you're Irish people and he was you're like scared obviously like oh you, you, the heart was gone I was kind of looking around to see what we would do and yeah. uh, a guy a guy stood up actually in the middle there was about five or six minute fucking table it was like a conference room which is the weirdest fucking thing and um, one guy stood up and he got really fucking aggressive and uh, your man just put his hand on his shoulder and he set him back down. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but he stood up and he started doing this this weird um, dance stuff where he was doing like fight moves and stuff. It was like a, a dance fight. I'd say thing. a lot of cocaine involved there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, for yeah. fucking sure. Fucking for <laughs> fucking sure. Jesus. But uh, he was there doing like, you know, poses and dance moves and kicking the air and stuff. And going, I am a fighter and I will fight you to the end. And they're like, fuck. Yeah, grand, like, you're, you're grand. We don't want to fight you. You have knives and 20 guys, like, you're fine, you know? But in the meantime, Alan, our drummer, had um, gone to the bar staff and to the guys with Uzis who didn't give a fuck. I was just going to ask <laughs> where were the boys. Give, <laughs> did not give a fuck. They were all up the bar, fucking six of them drinking fucking pints and laughing at it. They're like, oh, fuck, they're no good anyway. <laughs> fucking lads with Uzis drinking pints. <laughs> I was like, the fuck is this shit like? But anyway, we, we, um, when we were upstairs, we, your man gave me his jacket. He put it around me. He said, oh, you look very cold for Irish men. Jacket around <laughs> Shivering me. Shivering with and, fear. You know, <laughs> he said we weren't allowed to leave till we gave him our dresses. So we wrote down any old shit, like, you know, mm. we handed it to him. He says, I'm your friend. I come visit. And we're like, yeah, yeah, anytime, bye. Fuck. Yeah. I, I'll write down my number as well, you know. <laughs> but um, Alan had organized three taxis. There was 15 of us, five for taxi, and he gotten all the gear together. So when my, it was myself, Andy, and Liam, I think it was, were upstairs now. And um, there was other stuff happening downstairs. You should ask the other lads about their version of the story because I'd say you would get five or six different threads, you know, mm. where it yeah. all comes back to the same place. Like, but Tarantino. We, um, Alan came up and he was like, get the fuck out of here now, lads. Said there's fucking three cabs after pulling outside. They're waiting for us. Go downstairs, out the gap, into the fucking cab. Off we go. Like, yeah, mm. grand. First thing we did, run down, get in there. Dr- got your man who had the shit kicked out and was completely concussed. Got him into the fucking car. Next thing, a bottle just comes spinning through the air and <laughs> smashes off the fucking side of the cab. Like, so we fucking hightailed out of it. We got the fuck out of there, and uh, we couldn't go to our hotel because we had told the the, the taxi drivers where to bring us, and they rang ahead because they knew what was going on. And they were like, "You can't stay there. They know where you're staying." Like, 
Jesus <laughs> Christ. And we were like, what the fuck do they want with us? Like, so we had to, on last minute's notice, we had to stay in this fucking old hostel type place, you know? It was fucking, it was grim. It was really fucking grim. But um, we, we, it's one of those things where we don't know how, how dangerous it was, but, but yeah. yeah, it was fucking, it wasn't good. Like, it was no. really green room shit. Like, yeah, I was just going to say, know? yeah, you saw that film Green Room, yeah. Very, very similar, but not as intense, obviously. But it was there was points there where they were had they had weapons and stuff, and they were fucking oh. But a uh, funny story, fucking uh, our bass player uh, Colin at the time, he was uh, pissed, fucking locked, and he was at the bar, and he was just fucking raw rocking back and forward. And your man was looking for us, the leader guy. He was looking for everybody, like who see where we were gone because we were trying to get the fuck out. And um, he sat down next to Colin. And he was like. You write down your address. <laughs> and Colin was like, go ahead, fuck off. Like, fucking, who the fuck are you? Like, <laughs> and your man was like, because he couldn't understand what Colin was saying. You speak Tick Cork accent, like, you know. He's just no idea what he was saying. And he was like, oh, you speak you speak to me in uh, English, and I understand. And he's like, yeah, yeah fuck you. Yeah. Understand this. Go fuck yourself. And so he wrote, he, he took out a bit of paper, and he put it down. And he said to him, write down your address. Write it down. And your man fucking, Colin just, picked it up and wrote down, go fuck yourself, you stupid bastard, and handed it to him. And your man looked at it like, and he was like looking at it, and he just turned around and he goes, no, 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 you're real at this. <laughs> <laughs> he put it down next to him. Next thing, Colin, <laughs> Colin just starts doing a tic-tac-toe. He just put the knots and crosses and put an X in and handed it back to him. And your man just goes, and the boys were playing fucking tic-tac-toe while Alan is freaking out. <laughs> out like, Get the fuck out here, you know? Oh man! Oh, brilliant! Jesus Christ! You know, we we were PTSD after that fucking thing. Oh, we we imagine, actually cancelled the last gig. We actually cancelled the last gig. Um, we were so fucking shook. You know, mm. we were young men. We were only twenty five. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. twenty six yeah. maybe. That's and the guy they were battering was he Irish? Was he? He's Irish. Yeah, he's a good mate of mine from down Waterford. Oh and, fuck! Um, okay, I thought he they, might. They have been. gave him an awful beating, man. Like they they totally side with them. You know. Fucking fifteen of the cunts were they were literally kicking his head in the floor. Jesus. And uh, we we were trying to figure out whether to go to the hospital or not that night. But uh <coughs> he was he was so concussed and we were so young and we were we didn't know what to do. So our plan was was to sleep it off and go back to Krakow the next day and get some help, you know. Mm. But we kinda calmed down the following day and he was a lot better. And you know, the idea of getting help wasn't really a thing anymore. It was just a matter of getting to Krakow and having the crack, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just cracking crack <laughs> Yeah, you'd kind of wonder sometimes about bands. Now, to be fair, Baylor did it, you know. But I, again, you know, just just going off on this random trip mm-hmm. around Russia. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, I'd highly recommend it for people just for the experience of it. And even mm-hmm. as bad as that was, the first the first thing we talked about when we got back to Ireland was when we we're going to go back again, try it out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have yeah. to be a bit mad to to do these things, I guess, you know. And, it's uh, I highly recommend it, but have your wits about you. We mm, could have handled yeah. that a lot better too. We could have we could have read the signs early in that gig. You know, there was a guy with a fucking Uzi standing at the side of the stage asking questions. It was like, yeah, yeah, he's there for a reason. Let's get the fuck out there. You know. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Um, like again, like Joe from Gamma Bomb, they would have played South America, you know, Brazil, all yeah. those places, and great stories as well. But again. A lot of the time, you're relying on a promoter there that could be just interested in wiping the the profit and disappearing with it and leaving you stranded. It happens all the time. <clears throat> the amount of times, and being abroad more than anything else, the amount of times that you come back after the gig and it's been a great show and you've had a good crowd there and you go looking for the promoter and he's gone. You know, just gone. The bar left there going, going like, yeah, he has your money. And you're going to go, what the fuck are we supposed to do with that? You know, it's happened. Well, it's happened quite a few times there was some band there lately it was on um metal hammer one of, one of those magazines but they they'd ripped off a band and they followed they f- they got the address of the promoter and they drove up to his um house and kicked the yeah. shit out of the door and <laughs> eventually the girlfriend came out and um it was someone like anvil now or one of those type bands but eventually anyway mm. They they got in anyway and got your man and they fucked him into the cab and the singer was going, I'm going to kick the shit out of you, you bollocks. You know, and uh, your man was like in fear and they brought him all the way back to the gig and kicked him in through the door and of course he had no money 
and the bar mm. owner had no money and uh, so they just dragged them around for like a two hours in, in the cab and your mom just kept rabbit punching the, the, the promoter saying, I want my money, I want my nice. money. So they got, they escorted mm-hmm. them down to a bank link anyway and eventually they, they, he only got half the money but uh, it was brilliant to watch though. Like, you know, they was filling yeah. the whole way through it. Like, I can't remember what oh, it never wanted to. You never want things to come to that, you know. You would hope that people, I suppose the way we've dealt with it is just to advise people who are following afterwards not to fucking deal with these guys, you know, mm. which happens quite a bit. So it, it's, it's, it's a case where the mouth gets around really quick, especially these days, you know. It, it's harder to get away with that kind of thing. Yeah, but I mean... And you also, was, you also have recommend promoters who are, who've lost their bollocks on a Tuesday night. I mean, there's, there's that side of it too, like, true. but... um. It, it just when you're abroad it, it just you know i suppose there's less recourse it's harder to find the guy that owes it a few quid and you don't know who you're dealing with or what you're getting yourself into yeah you know and you're on a time schedule to get to the next place and and they know that too mm. they, exactly you know we gave a promoter a lift home one night or well, he said it was a lift home and uh we stopped him off and he said oh you must just go to the atm there to get your money and sure he went down the fucking side street and never came back like <laughs> Oh, I heard just sitting there in the van going, the fuck, like. <laughs> Jesus. Where was this hard? The Nottingham. Nottingham, long time ago. Um, yeah, quite some time ago. I, f- I forget the name of the guy. But uh, we, it was, a, it was a great gig in one sense. We made so many connections from that one show. You know, there was a lot of bands that we went on, back, went on tour with afterwards from that tour, or from that particular gig. Mm. Like, what, which kind of bands was that, Howard? Was that, like... So at the time they would have been called Solitary Mass, but they changed their name to Wizard's Beard. They were like an Iron Monkey type band from um, oh, yeah. from the late noughties. Um, fucking awesome. Um, there's two or three more as well that have come to Ireland at different stages, and we played with them over in the UK. I just can't think of the fucking names on the top of my head. Mm. But yeah. um, it's a great thing to get going, was, like, isn't it? It is. It's just from that one gig, you knew, you know, there must have been, it must have been a dozen shows came out of it for everybody, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we were left like, more than with no extra well. money. Oh, yeah, yeah, screwed luck. Do you think you've but, become kind of cynical over the last few years in relation to we'll say touring in I Europe? Wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I've become cynical, I've always been, <laughs> <laughs> always been cynical. I'm a cynical, fucker. you know, it doesn't come across um, that no, way. No, I, I love, I absolutely love these. Are just these are these are the exceptions other than the rule i mean it's just when it does happen it tends to happen in that situation Mm. because it's just more open to it if you're abroad you don't know where you are or what you're doing to a certain extent Mm -hmm. and it's just easier for pricks and promoters to to fucking fly over you know yeah Yeah. so it's got nothing to do with cynicism of being abroad i fucking love playing gigs abroad my favorite times ever have been on tour you know i turned 30 in the back of a van (laughs) <laughs> stuck, 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 stuck. We missed the um, missed the ferry back to from Wales to, to Ireland, and sure I was stuck in the back of the van, fucking missing my my thirtieth and my old for the sixtieth. Oh ah, shit! So, no, that's dedication. So we it was fucking like sitting there going like, yeah, <laughs> that's that cancelled anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Love it though. What a what a yeah. What a, how what a way to spend it like. You don't forget that's it. That's it, you know. And that's that's the other side of it. Like it's fucking you know yourself. There's, there's nothing quite like it and as hard as it can be when you're in it when you sit back and you look at it in hindsight it's all this fucking great mm. yeah just the absolutely. stories and the yeah yeah, fun, yeah. You know? can't, can't beat it like always worth it cannot beat it yeah. if you get if you get one good show out of four kind of thing or one good show out of three and yeah. then you know that that'll keep you going like absolutely yeah give and me you, yeah go on jack no no go on give me three bands that you'd love to be dragged across europe with then howard oh Oh fuck, man! Neurosis for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ, I think that's fairly obvious from from myself. <laughs> yeah, 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 no yeah, surprise. Yeah, yeah. Um, a hundred year old man. I think um, I'm a big fan of the lads. Good friends with the lads. They're 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 there's something special about those guys. There really is. Um, I yeah, I I, I think we we were hoping to be doing it this time actually coming up to the August Bank Holiday weekend. We were hoping to do a run a day to those guys. But oh, obviously, they were going to happen. We didn't do it. But I would, I, I, I fucking travel anywhere to play to those lads. And fucking a third band. It does not jump to mind. But there was an old band in um, the UK called White, W-I-T-H, uh, from Leeds. 
They were a three piece and I'd highly recommend checking them out. They're, they're no longer in operation, but um, I was looking up to see them in Leeds a couple of times. And I actually traveled over off my own back to see their EP lodge back in the day. What are they, Stone or Doom or what kind of slug? They're instrumental, instrumental, um, trying to find a barometer for Mega Massive, maybe, maybe a bit more rocky than that. Um, Pelican, I guess. Okay, Pelican, Pelican. would be a good barometer. Yeah. Did you ever hear of a band um, called Parhelia? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. coming up on the show um, the next oh, few yeah. weeks. Oh, fantastic. Mm. Sweet. You've got a lot lined up, Richie, in fairness, you know, it's uh, oh, man, it never stops. I'm a machine. Never stops. Like, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> it's the perfect time to do it. It is. You know, if you're thinking about it 12 years ago. If you were doing this, you'd have done the rounds 17 or 18 times by now because there's not that many people doing it. You yeah, know? it's great, man. Um, <laughs> great time. There's a lot of people at it, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, Parhelia have um, an interesting story because they're, how many years are they at it? Probably 10, 15 years. It must be, must mm. be, yeah. Jeez, you're talking late nineties, yeah, for sure. Yeah, one of the lads in work, he follows. He goes over to Holland for Dunk Festival. Is it Holland or Belgium? Dunk Festival, yeah. Yeah, he's big into all these instrumental bands, and um, he taught me about Pat O'Regan. He taught me about Parhelia, and that they'd have an mm. interesting story because they released an album in February, I think. But like, it it got great um, traction over over in Germany and Holland. And Belgium. Yeah, it seems to be the, the, the hot spot for that kind of music. It really mm -hmm. does. So, um, but like it didn't get much promotion here. So I said, Jesus, yeah, I'll have him on the show and give him an old push, you know. So we'll see. That's great, man. It'll be an interesting one. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah. And I, I love seeing bands like that that have been going that long, you know, because it, re it really does take something yeah. unique yeah. to be in a band for 15 years. You know, it's, it's yeah. not easy. No. You know, I have a lot of respect for people who do it. I think uh, that really comes across with a hundred year old man as well, like you were saying, Howard. Like the lads yeah. give it so much and you can see how much it means to them. And the fact that every time Absolutely. I them, it's it's been in Cork. And just when you see them, you know that they're they've traveled as a unit and there's something extra coming off them. There is there is um, there's something um special about those really, guys. Really and, special, yeah. And there's just so much depth to those guys. I mean, haven't gotten to know them all individually. And yeah, um, yeah. just the stories, just 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 how they got to where they are and what yeah. they had to go through, the sacrifices they make and the and chances they, they take. What they continue to go through, like, I mean, they're... It's just exactly. They're, they're, they're swapping members around all the time. And, yeah. you know, they know that that's the way that they have to operate and they've embraced it and they've yeah. just made everything they've done better yeah. by going through fucking hard times. They're fucking great, lads. And yeah. for those that haven't heard them, what album would you recommend for a person to get into? What? Uh, Breaching, I think it's called. Okay. Breaching. Um, it's the, it's the, I think it's the most recent one. It's fucking great. They have a song called Blackfire, which I'd highly recommend. Okay. Blackfire is, um, you'll hear um, the, the keyboardist uh, Dan doing his vocals on that. Is and that yeah, the one he was doing? Um, he did like, he was doing vocals without a mic. At, uh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, you're, man. You're, bang on there and that's that's where that bit comes in oh, and like when you know that guy and you uh you see what he's been through and you see yeah. him perform that you're just yeah. like that that's that's real that's that's not fucking around that's not pretending yeah. that's not yeah. being anybody else that, that's, that's fucking real really powerful thing to, to witness like cool. okay so that's it lads um howard do you want to give a shout out we'll give a shout out to christian ed mike Chris, james christian, ed Exchin, as he likes to be known, so he likes the X, you know. <laughs> he's a big fan of us pointing that out. So Exgen, he's going to have a matching um, uh, hairband and mask tomorrow night, wow. and uh, and and, mas and matching socks. So we've got that. Uh, shout out to James Grinnell, who's on a field trip at the moment in Mayo, measuring seismic activity. <laughs> as always, yeah, is he just he back from does. Japan? Is he? <laughs> You fucking never know. He was in the he was in the Galapagos fucking last year, and he flew back for a gig in Limerick. <laughs> Fuck me. So he came off the plane in Dublin, got a train down, and fucking on stage. Oh, mad fucking bastard. Yeah. No fucking mad bastard, like. And of course, Ed, Mister E, London, and we have Mike, Mike Jordan. Yeah. Who is uh, all of the boys? A special guy. <laughs> and He's I'm... my brother-in-law as well, which makes makes things all easier. Yeah. And thanks again, to Ed, as well for the painting, the crayon. Drawing as Howard says. <laughs> the retirement fund. That's it. That's man. it. Just, I'm going to frame it up for you and put a map in the back for not to be open for another 10 years. Oh. And, uh, 
<laughs> okay, of course. Lead you somewhere special. Of course, when this goes out, I was just going to say, um, be sure to watch tomorrow's show. But this one is coming out the following week, so um, we'll probably still be up. So still watch it. Try and watch yeah. it anyway. The, the, <laughs> yeah. He's up for. A, is it a week or three days, Jack? Ours is still up anyway. So. Still up. I, think, I think it stays up indefinitely. No, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, but, no it might take at some point, but they're leaving up a bit longer. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. good. Okay. Um, We're going to have to rob the, the, the video from that yeah. <laughs> and put it up. <laughs> and again, check oh. out the Magna Pina all on social media. They're brilliant at that. We're all over social media. Great lads. Um, yeah, you would be sick of us. And thanks. You'd be sick of the notifications. And thanks again, Power, for joining us. It was great talking to you again, man. Missed you. Likewise. Great to see you too, Jack. Yeah. And cheers, so Jack. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll catch you for a jam soon with Magna Pina. You know, get learning the songs, it's yeah. important. Oh, I'm on it. Richie, thanks for everything. Yeah. Cheers, lads. Thanks a minute. Keep up the good work. Cheers. Bye now.